Hey guys, today we're back in black. We're talking about ACDC today. And it's not the band ACDC, don't worry. You guys are just rad techs. You're not on the highway to hell. So we're talking about ACDC alternating versus direct current. You wanna stick around all the way to the end to see who won in the big battle royale between Thomas Edison on the one side and Nikola Tesla on the other side. We'll be getting to that as we go through, but strap in for a little ACDC here. About to get thunderstruck. So first off, we're gonna talk about DC current. So that's the simplest type of a circuit we could draw here. If we start, think about we have a little battery. So this is the positive end. And then the simplest circuit we could draw we have a resistor, and then we have what we call a voltage right here. So this is a voltage or a potential difference across that battery. And then the current, we call this current I. What's really happening is electrons are running actually the opposite way from what we call the direction of the current. We call current I the direction because Benjamin Franklin was doing some experiments he wasn't sure what was actually happening inside of that wire. He didn't know that there were actually electrons moving. He picked a direction that we would call the current. He had a 50% chance, unfortunately he was wrong. So we call the current that direction. And what we're talking about here is the voltage as a function of time. So if we make a plot of the voltage as a function of time, it's gonna be a straight line in the case of DC current. So this means even as we go over time, that voltage is staying constant. So it's kind of simple to understand the current's always moving in this one direction and the voltage is always staying constant. That's what we call DC or direct current. So that's on the one hand. And Thomas Edison is the spokesman in the late 1800s. It's time to get everyone on a grid. It's time to put the nation on a grid. And this is the Thomas Edison camp. Get to that in a minute. Should we use DC power to put us on a grid and get, bring power to everyone? And then on the other side of DC, we have what we call AC, or alternating current. So in this case, we draw the symbol like this. What we're really talking about is current and voltage, it's gonna be changing as a function of time. So we use this little symbol like this. So if we do the same type of a simple circuit here, again, we have a resistor here, some sort of resistive load, but now we have an alternating current. So if we draw a plot of the voltage here, in this case, we had a constant voltage as a function of time. Instead of that, we have a sinusoid or a changing voltage. So it's going high, low, high, low. And what that means here, this is positive and this is negative. So this is that alternating voltage. Again, we have a resistor here, but we start off and our current first goes in this direction. So we have a voltage, essentially a positive in this direction. And then that would mean that it's going all the way around like this. Then as time goes by, here we pass through zero. So at this instant, there's actually no voltage, the voltage of zero. And then our voltage goes negative. So then when our voltage goes negative, then the current starts flowing in this direction. So minus so you go positive, negative, positive, negative, like that. And this is what's called AC, or alternating current. So AC has some big advantages over DC. And in the battle royale, this was Nikola Tesla. Not having to do with the car company. He didn't start that car company, they just named it after him because he came up with a bunch of cool inventions in his day. 
And Tesla actually was a proponent for alternating current. We'll be talking later about transformers. The fact is transformers only work with alternating current. And transformers are what allows us to actually step up or step down a voltage inside of a circuit. And because of that, we have voltages which are much higher outside in the power lines which actually transmit power. It's done more effectively at those very high voltages where we don't have as much loss through in the cables over distance. And then it's not safe though to have those really high voltages in our house. So we have step down transformers at our house. If you, if you look in your backyard before the wires coming into your house, there's a little, a little cylinder there and that has a big step down transformer inside of it. That's really the big reason why uh, Nikola Tesla was going for alternating current. Thomas Edison was going for direct current. A big reason was Edison had the patents for this DC current technology. So that's why it's the best, obviously, because you're the one behind it. Um, in the US, the voltages that we get coming into our house, these alternating currents, they're coming in at 60 hertz. So what's a hertz? Let's talk about that. We have this right here is what we call a waveform, right? And if we look at two points on that waveform that are the same, that means we have one complete repetition there. That's what we call one wavelength. The time that it takes to complete that one wavelength called the period, the period. So that period is measured in seconds. The period is measured in seconds. And if we want to take what's called the inverse of that to say, if I wait a certain amount of time, like say I wait a second, how many of these repetitions are going to occur? That's what we call the frequency. So the frequency is one over the period in seconds. And because we don't like saying inverse seconds a lot to describe things, we call that a unit that we call Hertz. So in the US, we're talking about uh, 60 Hertz. And in Great Britain, I think it's 50. So somewhere between the 50 to 60 Hertz is what we typically have coming in. So faster than I can even move or, or show you here in real life. And then the voltage that we get coming in, what's coming into our house? If we look at the voltage, what they specify the voltage in, it's called root mean square. So what the heck is root mean square? It's really easy to say the voltage here because it's just one number. It's not changing at all, right? The voltage over here, the average voltage isn't that useful to specify because the average is actually zero. We go positive, then we go negative, then we go positive, then we go negative. So if we just said zero, that doesn't really help us to know how much power is actually being transmitted. So we use something that we call root mean square. So it's the voltage and then root mean square. So we actually come from this direction. So if we take this plot here, we're going to square it first. If we square this plot, we're going to get something. Let me go right here. We're going to get something that looks like this, right? So if this is a function of time. So this again is the voltage as a function of time. And you can see now it got a little bit peakier. So the peaks got a little bit higher. And now everything's positive because we took the square. So when you take the square of a number, you can never have a negative. So that's the square of this. And then if we take, we want to take the mean of this. So we have the mean of this signal. What we would need to do is do something to take the average of this 
And in order to take the average of this, we would need to do something called an integral. But essentially what we want is just to figure out what number, if we had a rectangle, what would the value of that rectangle be such that it would have the same area under the curve as this profile? So that actually would be a straight line. If this is the V max right here, V max, this would be V max divided by two. So the rectangle, which has half the height of the maximum peak here, that's the one which has the same area under the curve. So then what we need to do after that is take the square root. So we did, we squared it, then we took the mean, and then now we're going to take the square root. The square root of 2 times the VRMS is equal to the V max because we have, this is a value of 1 half right here. Then we need to take the square root. We could throw it on the other side here. So the V max is equal to the square root of 2 times the VRMS. So in the US we get 120 volts typically. And then we multiply that by square root of 2, which is like around 1.4. So we have around 170 for the Vmax. So right here on this plot, it's around 170 volts. And then this would be around minus 170 volts. So even though we talk about it being 120 volts coming into our house, that's really specifying what we call the root mean square. And it really means the total amplitude from the peak here to the trough here is 340 volts. So now you know all about direct current, you know about alternating current, we are talking about the transformers, how the transformers work, why alternating current is so valuable for all the types of circuits in x-ray circuits, in computers, a lot of times you'll have boards in, that contain different components that all want different voltages and that's not possible that's not possible with dc you can't just change the voltage here whereas over here we're going to be talking about electricity and magnetism how using both electricity and magnetism together really lets us have the advantages with alternating current again that's with transformers thanks again that's really the basis of why we're talking about AC and DC here for you, the radiologic technologists. I hope you learned something interesting. You learned about the battle royale between Edison and Tesla. You learned why Tesla was really the winner because we can transmit that power over long distances now because of the fact that we have alternating current. If you really got some value out of this one appreciate it if you can give it give it a like down below and then click on subscribe also let me know this is a new format that we're trying out here with these lightboard videos let me know if you find this valuable or if you'd rather just stick to the standard kind of powerpoint 